Hello, thank you for clicking on the video and welcome to the channel. Today I'll talk about the right to remain silent. Is it available under congressional inquiry? Let's talk about this. Hi, welcome back. I am Dean Rod Vera. I'm a law school dean, a law professor, and of course, a lawyer as well. Uh, today I'd like to talk about an interesting topic. Uh, during one of the congressional hearings, a witness, when asked the question, invoked her right to remain silent. Now I asked myself, is this possible? Is this allowed? Is it constitutional? Well, I looked under the laws, the constitution, and the rules. Let me make it clear first that the Senate and the House of Representatives, or Congress as a whole body, has the power granted by the constitution to conduct congressional inquiries in aid of legislation. And with that uh, uh, caveat, or with that power, the Constitution also says that the rights of the witnesses shall be respected. I'm sure you've seen it in the YouTube channels and in under the news that a lot of these uh, witnesses uh, invoke the right against self-incrimination. I made a video on that topic, and I'll put the uh, link for the video in the description. And um, today I'll talk about that right to remain silent. Now... What is that right? Under the Bill of Rights, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution for the Philippines, and of course also in the U.S., it's the Miranda Rights, uh, a person under investigation or criminal investigation has the right to remain silent. That is absolute, meaning the state cannot force that witness, that person under investigation, to make a statement. And also in the Constitution, any confession or admission in violation of that right, the right to remain silent, cannot be used as evidence against that person who was forced to talk or his right to, his right to remain silent was not respected. Another important uh, right under the Bill of Rights is that no witness shall be, or no person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. That again is the self right of self-incrimination. To invoke the right to remain silent in this congressional increase, I believe that there are requirements that has to be met. First, first, that person or that witness must be under investigation for a commission of a crime. And once that person is under investigation, he has the right to be informed of the right to remain silent. And there is a warning to that person that anything that he says, he utters, after being told of his right to remain silent, that anything can and will be used against him in court. Now, jurisprudence has determined that the right to remain silent when invoked cannot be used as an implication or indication or an admission of guilt of that crime he's being asked about. That is primordial. In other words, silence can never be an indication or admission of guilt. Let me make that clear. Now, putting all the rights of the person in investigation, can it be used in Senate inquiries or House of Representatives inquiries? Well, first of all, they call it an investigation. They don't call it an inquiry, an investigation in the aid of legislation. To invoke the right to remain silent, that witness or resource person must have a pending case in court, meaning it has been acknowledged and it's been settled that the right to remain silent is only available to an accused, meaning he's already been charged or accused of a crime. Again, this right to remain silent has been, as you can see in TV and in the movies, they are done when the person is arrested or suspected of a crime. He's accosted by the police or any uh, agent of the police, and then he must be informed of his rights, meaning no case yet has been filed in court. He's just arrested meaning the state, through the police, or agents of the police, have accosted him and technically deprived him of his certain liberties. Therefore, he's already under a custodial investigation. Thus, in that scenario, the right to remain silent is available. Now, the Bill of Rights are impositions against the state, meaning you can only invoke the Bill of Rights against the state, not against private persons. Now, again, under the right to remain silent, the state cannot compel that person to talk. That person 
has the right to close his mouth, to shut his mouth. Here, I'm going to propose a controversial theory that, again, the argument, the logical theory that the Bill of Rights is invoked against the state. Is the Senate or Congress or House of Representatives, are they the state? Of course they are. Albeit that they're elected, nevertheless, they are the government. And take note, when they are witnesses or resource persons in these inquiries, they have to swear an oath, meaning they are under threat of perjury, under threat of giving false testimony. And what do they call this inquiries? They call it investigation. And they warn the people that if you don't follow their subpoena or their invitation, they can have you arrested. It's not exactly an arrest warrant, it's an arrest order, meaning they can uh, compel the person to appear in front of their committee. I am proposing an argument that if the witness or resource person has pending cases in court, his right to remain silent can be used in that inquiry because the Senate or House of Representatives, for, for, all, for all intents and purposes, is technically the state. Lastly, under the power to in conduct investigations or inquiries, the Constitution says that the rights of the persons, the witnesses, the resource persons, must be respected in that inquiry. So therefore, if these are available under the Constitution, the right to remain silent, the right against self-incrimination, and the right against to be a witness against yourself, these rights must be respected. So, the right to remain silent, in my argument, in my belief, in my theory, is available to a witness when there is a pending case in court. If you disagree with me or have a different opinion, I would love to hear what you have to say. Please indicate in the comments. Let's have a lively discussion. Hi, please do me a favor and smash that like button. It'll help me a lot and it will trigger the YouTube algorithm. Now, if you have not yet, please subscribe to my channel. If you don't, my dog will eat this exam booklet and that student has to repeat his final exam again.